Hello and welcome to this, pres this presentation. My name is Lars Tingelstad and I work as an associate professor at the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering at NTNU, the Norwegian University of Science and, and Technology. The title of the presentation is Welding Automation Using Constraint-Based Robot Programming. The presentation consists of four parts and the outline is as follows. First, a short introduction to our research group, the challenges we meet in the, Nor in the Norwegian manufacturing industry, as well as Monelab, the new national infrastructure lab for manufacturing research. Then, I will present robotic welding of large offshore structures and the challenges we face with multipass welds. This is followed by how we can use constraint-based methods to address these challenges. And finally, I will present uh, some conclusions and an outlook for the future. The Robotics and Automation Group is led by Professor Ola Egland and is part of the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering. We are currently located at campus Glushaugen, where we are now building the largest university robotics lab in Norway. We do research in several fields within robotics and automation, and among these are production automation, embedded systems, subsea and offshore control systems, robotic production, mechatronics, as well as Industrial Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. As I mentioned, my name is Lars Tingelsta and I work as an Associate Professor in Robotic Production. I've worked with constraint-based methods in robotics in the context of robotic assembly, where we, where we have extracted geometric constraints directly from CAD and STEP files using the new AP242 standard. Using these constraints, we've been able to successfully generate eTassel spe task specifications. As part of this research, we've developed eTassel ROS control, which integrates the eTassel framework developed by KU Leuven and presented here at the workshop with ROS control. We've also done some preliminary work on integrating eTassel with the new ROS2 control framework, which is still under development. This software is uh, available online with installation instructions at my GitHub. In the Norwegian manufacturing industry, we typically have small batch production of advanced, custom and high cost produ products where industry specific knowledge is needed. Important industries include the maritime industry, oil and gas, and marine and ocean industries. And last but not least, the, renew the renewable energy industry. Now, existing industrial robot technologies has been developed for industries such as the car manufacturing industry with high volume production and slow turnaround between products. But the Norwegian industry requires quick turnaround between products and advanced robot systems that enable profitable production in small series. The main takeaway is that it takes too long to build and program a robot cell. To face these challenges, we're currently in the final stages of setting up a new national lab infrastructure for manufacturing research called Monolab. And Monolab is partly funded by the, Nor by the Norwegian Research Council. It is used to promote restructuring in Norwegian businesses and digitalization in industries such as oil and gas, marine, maritime, and manufacturing of goods and services. Out of a total budget of 8.3 million euros, 1.1 million euros has been put towards robotic production in Trondheim. Two new labs have been set up 
the robotic welding lab we focus on robotic welding of steel and aluminum structures towards the maritime and offshore industries as well as the industry 4.0 lab with focus on lightweight and mobile robots a robotic laser welding cell as well as an aluminum production line has also been set up the robotic welding lab comprises a total of five work cells with Jaskawa Mutman and Kuka robots, all equipped with Frunius welding equi equipment. In the picture on the right, you see the current setup in our largest work cell. This work cell is equipped with two Jaskawa Mutman GP25 arc welding robots, where one uh, robot is mounted on a linear rail together with a five ton workpiece positioner. Both robots are equipped with optical sensors and cold metal transfer or CMT welding tools. Currently, our research group are working with the Norwegian industry in two projects funded by the Norwegian Research Council. One project is on the welding of large steel structures, such as offshore oil platforms. And the other project is on the welding of large aluminum structures such as offshore living quarters, boats and helicopter decks. The two projects have several aspects in common. Large welding seams that requires multiple passes, problems with reflections when using optical sensors, and Work pieces with non-nominal geometry and tolerance deviations, making the use of technologies such as laser welding impossible. However, the primary challenges are the programming and touch-up of welding paths and the execution of robot trajectories using sensor feedback. Now, welding paths and robot trajectories can be generated with the help of an offline programming system. However, this requires that the 3D model of the workpiece and the actual workpiece geometry be within the geometric tolerances of the welding process. And, as I mentioned, this is not the case in the manufacturing of large subsea constructions. Another aspect is that of large welding seams, where multiple passes analogous, analogous to additive manufacturing has to be performed to fill the entire volume. The welding string layout is typically pre-planned. However, the built geometry might have a non-uniform layout with large geometric discrepancies due to process irregularities such as heat distortion. In addition, welding paths and robot trajectories might need to be corrected and replanned based on the built geometry. This replanning requires an iterative online strategy where a sensor system scans the built geometry and generates welding paths for the remaining welds. The welding process might need to be replanned multiple times during execution. To sum up, there are several challenges in Norwegian and international manufacturing when using standard and commercially available robot systems for robotic welding. That is, in small batch production in general and in the robotic welding of large offshore structures in particular. So, one way towards solving these challenges are the use of constraint-based robot programming or or CBRP approaches. And with that I mean sensor-based control, hierarchical or prioritized inverse kinematics, where some tasks have higher priority than others, as well as process-centric task specification. Here, the task, such as robotic assembly or robotic welding, 
is defined or specified in terms of constraints on the process, geometric uh, constraints on the process, geometric constraints on the work pieces and the environment, as well as kinematic and dynamic constraints on the robotic system. In terms of robotic welding, we will focus on three sets of constraints that can be used to define the welding task. These are constraints on the welding process, geometric constraints on the welding tool and the workpiece, as well as kinematic constraints on the robotic system. A skilled welder adjusts several parameters during the welding process to ensure a stable final weld. These four, the, or the four primary process parameters are that of the welding current, the wire electrode extension, welding voltage, and finally the arc travel speed. All these four parameters have large ranges with upper and lower bounds within which the process can be controlled. And in terms of geometric constraints, the welding, welding process can be defined in terms of the position and orientation of the welding tool with respect to the workpiece. The position of the tip of the welding tool is constrained to be on the welding seam. That is, to ensure a good weld, the tool must be within the position tolerances of the welding process. Opposed to the position, the orientation of the welding tool can be unconstrained. However, in practice, the orientation is constrained within some bounds on the sticking and dragging angle. And in terms of the null space of the task, this results in a cone-shaped null space. And in terms of process priorities, the position and linear velocity of the tip of the welding tool has the highest priority. The process can be modeled as a set of prioritized tasks suited for hier hierarchical or prioritized inverse kinematic solvers. And depending on the welding task at hand, the position has the highest priority followed by the orientation as well as joint and workspace limits. Note that the modeling of welding tasks using a set of geometric constraints is not new. This line of research dates back to the early 1990s with the task function approach by Samson. On the right is an excerpt from the 1991 paper Application of the Task Function Approach to Sensor-Based Control of Robot Manipulators by Samson and SPO. Here, the authors discuss the use of constraints on geometric primitives such as points, lines and planes to define robot tasks such as tracking of the, of the seam in arc welding. More recent work on the use of geometric constraints for task specification of welding operations can be found in the output of the SME Robotics project. More specifically, in the paper An Exact Solver for Geometric Constraints with Inequalities by Somani, Rikit and Knoll from 2017, as well uh, as a thorough presentation in the PhD thesis of Somani from 2018. When employing sensor-based real-time control in the manufacturing setting, it is important to ensure stable process quality by avoiding joint limits and singularities of the possibly redundant robotic system. And there are several papers, papers that has addressed this issue. Amongst these are a series of papers by Flacco, De Luca and Katib on an approach they call the saturation in the null space or SNS approach. Another line of research into avoiding joint limits during sense-based control can be found in the set-based approach found in the works of Signemo and co-authors. Several frameworks for constraint-based robot programming has been developed over the recent years. 
and amongst these are the stack, uh, stack of tasks, open SOT, command plus, Cartesio, as well as eTassel and iTask from KU11. And several of these frameworks has been developed with humanoids as the primary use case. Now, eTassel has been used in an industrial system by the Belgian company FRS Robotics for ultrasonic robo robotic quality control. And for more information regarding this, I uh, urge you to see the presentation by Professor Juris de Skutter in this workshop. Moreover, the EU project Commonoid employed constraint-based constraint robot programming of humanoid robots in a one-day workshop at the Airbus factory for aircraft manufacturing. However, robotic welding using any of these constraint-based robot programming frameworks has not been fully explored. Now, as mentioned, the programming time of robotic welding systems is too long and has to be reduced when we move towards using constraint-based methods. In our research, we focused on extracting geometric information of robotic assembly tasks directly from CAD using STEP and the new STEP AP242 standard. This geometric information is then used to generate a series of Lua task specifications for use with eTassel in our eTassel ROS control system. For more information, see our paper Leveraging Model-Based Definition and STEP AP242 in Task Specification for Robotic Assembly presented at the CIRP CATS conference uh, in September 2020 and published in Procedia CIRP. <coughs> we are now expanding this work for task specification of robotic welding operations. And for more details on that, see the contribution to this workshop by my PhD student Shafi uh, Kureshi Mohammed and uh, postdoctoral post researcher Matthias Havan Arbo at the Department of Engineering Cybernetics here at NTNU and myself. And the final piece of the puzzle, maybe, <coughs> is that of execution and integration with the industrial, industrial robots controller. Most of the commercially available industrial, uh, industrial robots, as well as welding sources, can be externally controlled. Now, for KUKA robots, <coughs> this would employ uh, the RSI interface, while for Yaskava Mutuman, a custom setup has to be developed using the Mutuplus system. Exporting a velocity or position control interface, these systems can, and some already are, integrated into frameworks such as Urkos, ROS, and ROS2. <coughs> the conclusion is then, all of the necessary components are there to transfer knowledge on constraint-based robot programming from humanoid research and the academic domain into the industrial, industrial domain of welding automation. That is, we have theory on hierarchical inverse kinematics and optimization. We have software, that is, we have reference, reference implementations of constraint-based robot programming frameworks, as well as, as well that industrial, industrial robots and welding equipment are open for external control. However, we must and are working in con close contact with the industry and industrial practitioners to experimentally validate and verify the constraint-based robot programming approach. Thank you.